it's been said that it's one of her best so we'll see about that we'll be the judge of that but we're gonna get into a miss beverly jenkins reading vlog moment you know y'all see that mac and cheese exactly black man flowers i'm sold but i was like girl <laughs> take the thermals off i thought that i didn't like the cheating trope but mayhaps i do she was the teacher but he was teaching her some things like it was just moo moos and their husbands building their houses from scratch okay let's get the moo moos rolling you see it you see it you see, oh 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 wait hold on wait i know it light up ah! you see me you see me you see see me walmart really be having the hits i ain't gonna lie hold on let me turn this shit off too. coming to you barefaced okay so hello 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 book to the world is i capri nicole and i'm back with another video hello if you're new here my name is capri nicole and i make bookish videos and in today's video we're gonna get into Miss Beverly Jenkins, the black historical fiction OG. So as far as I know, I've never read any books by Beverly Jenkins. Stop. I know, I know you're judging me. I know you're looking at me like, what are we talking about, Capri? Like, be for real. But I haven't. I really ordered these two, but these covers really just encaptured me. So I end up ordering this one as well. This one really isn't on my TBR. My main focus is going to be these two, but these covers these covers hello apparently this one isn't like a historical romance but it's been said that it's one of her best so we'll see about that we'll be the judge of that but we're gonna get into a miss beverly jenkins reading vlog moment you know it's holiday season i feel like holiday season is time for historical romance you know what i'm saying and it's something about this era that really just does it for me every time just the elaborate dresses the gowns the crowns the gloves i live okay especially in bridgerton i live for the costumes okay i'm living i i love it so i'm really excited to get into these i love these covers so much they just make me so happy and i literally want to buy every book she's ever written but that's what we're going to be getting to in this vlog it's also the day before thanksgiving so my mom's coming over tomorrow and i know some people don't celebrate thanksgiving but black folks really just have thanksgiving just to eat and be around family we really don't be celebrating it based off of the history behind it you know what i'm saying we celebrated just to have days off from work and to eat so that's what i'm going to be doing tomorrow we're gonna be making basically like a seafood thanksgiving i'm making a ton of like seafood and my mom's making sides so i'm excited for my four day weekend I'm excited to read some Miss Beverly J. And I might do a little bit of holiday shopping. Honestly, I really am not in the mood for holiday shopping. My man is not here. My nieces are not here. They're in Hawaii. My mama is not here. You know what I'm saying? Like, nobody is here but me. And I love decorations because it just makes everything so exciting. But maybe being alive right now is expensive. So I'm saving my coin every chance I can get and holiday decor is expensive i don't even know if i'm really feeling her if i can add it into my budget and it's something i can financially afford then i will consider it also we oh my god i'm i'm getting so my color goes away in the winter time so if you see me get like ghost pale pretend not to see pretend not to see because my melanin just literally disappears in the winter time so it's fine but i also wanted to watch this movie called the malcolm's list which i saw on a youtube commercial youtube commercials would be so damn annoying but they really be looking out with the movies i ain't gonna lie that's the only way i know what movies are out i'm about to be tapping into that and it is a historical romance-esque you know movie and they got the black folks in it and they got the people of color in it so i'm trying to see what they talking about that commercial was like two minutes long and they would have gave away the whole damn movie so i didn't watch the whole thing but i know it's historical romance and they got black folks and they got people of color grumpy male main character that's all you need to know so that's what we're gonna begin to in the vlog i'm super excited i know you guys are like what are the synopsis of these books i simply don't know it's just books and vibes because 
I don't even want to know what these books are about. I like going into books without knowing. I like to read and not know. And then I'll update you guys with the synopsis. But these are the books. I don't want to put too much on my plate because we're creeping towards the end of the year. So I have other videos that I need to do. Oh, another thing. Y'all need to vote on the community tab of what I'm going to name you guys. Like... A few of you guys, well, a lot of you guys have voted, actually, but I want to make sure everybody votes gets in. So if you have not already, make sure you go to the community tab and pay attention to the community tab because I post stuff on there all the time to find out you guys' schedule, to find out about live shows, to find out about nicknames and all kind of stuff. So it's fun on the community tab. Head on over there and vote because the nickname for you guys right now, the one that's winning is Islanders and Seashells is in second place. Seashells and Petals were like my two favorite, but Islanders is winning by a landslide. So you better go over there and vote because the poll is gonna close at the last day of this year. So that is it. I will check in with you guys when I have more to update you guys on. Okay, bye. I wish I never told you what I feel so close to us Your hands still stay in the color dust I've shot from all your broken eyes Still wish I never told you what I feel assembling our thanksgiving me and my mother it's just the two of us my sister's here she on facetime mac and cheese lobster cornbread i made coconut shrimp curry yams mustard greens this is the rice for the curry this is a cucumber salad my mom's over here frying making fish and she about to make shrimp too over there ma huh how you mix it together and it chill. Okay, that's different. Wow. Okay. <laughs> My mom's making fish over here. But we about to get we about to get our low vibrational plate going on, you, you know what I'm saying? On? How's it looking, sister? It looks great. It does look really good. Okay. It, it gotta cover, but mommy trying to make this stuff fast, child. Jada, what you doing? Oh, no, you put it in the pan <laughs> and put it in the oven. My sister on FaceTime. This one, right? Let me show y'all what we got going on. Oh! <laughs> now, hold on. We got the lobster tail. My mom made cornbread and she stuffed it with shrimp. I made a curry. A shrimp curry that I made with potatoes, onions, peppers, all that. We got the mac and cheese. No, I need y'all to see that. Y'all see that mac and cheese? Exactly. We got coconut shrimp. We got fish. Mustard greens. And then this little uh, cucumber, tomato, avocado salad on the side. But yeah, get into her. Get into her. Look at that. Oh my god. Mmm. Woo! Look at the mustard greens. Look at the mustard greens. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so I'm a little bit anxious because I'm getting ready to take Doll to her vet appointment. She's been sick for the past like week and she hasn't been eating. 
so I'm like a little bit worried so I'm taking her to the vet and to get my mind off of those things I'm gonna talk to you guys about this book so I started this book I think it's called rebel and it's like a series called women who dare so this is officially my first Beverly Jenkins book that I'm reading and these little pages are so easy to fly through like I was literally eating these pages alive like 75 pages because I, I marked how many pages to read a day in order to stay on track for this video I flew through them 75 pages so fast it was just amazing this book follows the main character her name is Belinda and she's a teacher around the time that slaves were freed there's a lot of people that are working with the clan trying to like shut down teachers that are teaching now freed slaves how to like read and write and you know academic wise she's trying to you know help her people out and they trying to shut her down she's dealing with those hardships and this is set in new orleans and then the other main character his name is captain laveau is an architect but i think he's also in some type of like law enforcement or a soldier or something like that because he does wear a uniform and like there were people that attacked Valinda in the beginning of the book and he basically like rescued her which was so cute as of right now i'm feeling Valinda. i'm feeling Valinda because she just don't take nobody and i just love to see a girl boss you know what i'm saying girl boss gatekeep she's just leading her people and doing her thing and she is very outspoken another thing that i like about this book so far is laveau is from like a really big family so i think he has like all brothers which is super cute i love books that have big families so i'm excited to read this like i think he also speaks french as well so i'm just ready to see the new orleans setting come to life i'm excited to see the romance unfold they're both kind of feeling each other but she's kind of like betrothed to somebody like she got a little boo thing that's over i think he's studying in france or something like that so she got like a long distance boo we're gonna have to give him the boot because i'm trying to see laveau and belinda get together so we're gonna have to figure out how he's gonna get out the picture okay he gotta go but as of right now she didn't have anywhere to stay so she's staying with his family and that's basically where i left off at and like the tensions are you know subtle cute little small little moments like i think it's gonna be a slow burn so i'm excited to see their romance unfold but so far so good it's an easy read for some reason this one is calling to me i know like this one is the one that's on my tbr because everyone says like this isn't like her normal like historical romance type books and this one's calling to me and i just love how like old it looks i bought it used so like the pages are like yellowing a little bit i just like how how old it looks you know what i'm saying but this supposed to be on my tbr but this one low-key calling to me i don't know if it's the cover but when i see black men and i see flowers i just love pictures that have black men with flowers like i i know it's just not only him he's not the main focus in this picture but like black man flowers i'm sold like to say the least i'm sold but we gonna see i'm gonna finish up this one this will officially be my first Beverly Jenkins book and then we'll see where we go from there I could really read both of these but I won't put too much on my plate because we already at the end of the year and I gotta start cranking out them end of the year videos so I just wanted to update y'all I'm gonna get doll ready for this appointment hope for the best and hope they make my baby better because I'm tired of seeing her sick child I hate seeing her sick so I will check in with you guys later I'm a mother like Ray as they roll down the window Heavier as they fall And when the train stops There's a moment of silence When you know it's time to go And now there's Mom just came over She got all this little catnip lamb chop This is real old school If you know who lamb chop is Then you You in the same age bracket is me <laughs> slowly starting to eat more go nurse her back to health okay y'all my mama just brought over here some eggnog and all i can say <laughs> is that's liquor that is liquor like that sh is so strong she about to damn kill me like girl
do I do? Why is it so hard to find someone new so far away? All the days that I used to have someone right beside me Now I can find in my phone screen It's tiring when just wanna feel something Only nights talking the pixels I don't go out, don't intermix with the crowd Is that so hard to ask for? I just want something that's real, that's alive Don't want no white noise on the other line I just want a connection Is that so hard to ask for? I just want something that's real, that's alive Don't want no phone steady, phone steady Being by myself But it's better for my mental health I do not like anybody here So why do I care? I tell myself that I just need to have someone else right I don't want to go to fish it <laughs> fish it right here, mommy Oh boy. I'm trying to get her to see the fish. There's two right there. Pubs, are you really balancing on the skull in your tank, ma'am? She like, yeah, and what about it? What are you doing? what's up so i just want to check in with you guys and let you guys know that doll is doing much better she had a cold and it just got worse and then she stopped eating for like a few days so the timing was terrible because it's the holidays so 90 percent of everything was closed up until friday so i was just really worried about her but i took her to the vet they gave her a ton of antibiotics fluids and as soon as we got back home she was feeling much better she's playing she's purring she followed me around like she always do and she ate four times so doll is up and running and i'm happy about it so i bought her a celebratory new collar set and my mom got her this cute little toy so i'm just i feel happier now that doll's okay but the reading i don't know why i thought i was about to be flying through this book during the holidays like very ambitious of me but i don't know who i thought i was that simply was not happening I, the first 75 pages i did fly through but i haven't been able to read it because i was trying to finish up this book that i'm reading for a vlog that's going up i actually did nocturnal a nocturnal november reading sprints on jesse's channel they did like these really late reading sprints and i don't know why i didn't re realize the theme until it was time to actually <laughs> go live i didn't realize it was so late it was at like 10 o'clock at night and if you know me i go to bed at 8 p.m or 9 p.m sharp even on my days off i be in the bed okay i'm a taurus i love my bed i love sleeping so yeah, but honestly, I wasn't tired while we were doing the sprints. We had a really good conversation. We had a lot of people on. It was fun. I had a little wine. You know, I did a, a lot of reading. It was really successful, productive reading sprints. So I really enjoyed it. So it actually pushed me to almost finish that one. So I'll be able to focus on this book today once I get a few things done. But I just want to check in with you guys. And hopefully, I really want to read at least 75 more pages. I really want to put more of a dent into this book. As I said, I know that this is on the TBR but I'm really really leaning towards this and I think it's the pretty cover and she eats you know she simply eats down the covers are just delivering uh, so I might pick this one up next but just want to check in with you guys let you guys know that doll's okay so I will see you guys in the next clip
What's up, y'all? We got a little situation. I got a couple things I want to show y'all. All right, so number one, look at this cute cup that I got from Target. I got black Santa on it. So cute. But the thing is, I don't drink juice, so... I mean, I don't mind juice, but, like, I usually only drink water. Like, and then I make tea. I can put my wine in here. Uh, maybe buy some juice, because this is just too cute. I just had to get this. This was too cute. We got a little S Starbucks haul. So, I've never had the Starbucks um, Christmas drinks. And I tried the pumpkin spice latte during fall, and it really was not good. Like, I don't know why everybody be talking about that damn drink it just tastes like a regular latte to me child i ain't even taste no pumpkin but i got and caramel drizzle so we gonna see child that damn drink was almost nine dollars but hopefully it's good hopefully it tastes better than the latte because that latte wasn't talking about none all right let's see what we got oh and i got a little impossible um breakfast sandwich they breakfast sandwich. They breakfast don't really be good, but I was hungry, so I was like, hey. All I got in this house is Thanksgiving food. Oh, it's cute. She's cute. She's cute. The the bread is really soft. I think I'm gonna like this. But let's see what this coffee's talking about. Oh, cute. It's cute. Oh, I did apple drizzle. A venti caramel brew latte with oat milk and spicy apple drizzle. So that's what I got. Cute. Ah! Happy holidays from Starbies. Super cute. Have y'all seen the Starbucks to drink cups from um, China and Japan? They eat down. Like I ordered a couple of them because they are so damn cute, but they're, they're holiday themed cups. America need to catch up. Cause them tumblers that they have, they ain't touching Japan and China and all of them because they, they serve. But let's see, let's see. Hmm. Oh, wow. Hmm. That's real good. Ooh. Why they don't bring these around year round? These things good. Definitely taste the, the apple drizzle and I, it definitely tastes like a, I think that's a dessert. The little dessert that's like creamy but then the top creme brulee. It tastes like that. Yeah, oat milk is gonna serve every time. It really just, it just adds to it. So, this was a go. This was really good. I'm gonna try to get some reading done. Today is the one day where I don't have that much to do. Main goal is to do some reading and catch up on these good reads reviews. Oh, let me tell y'all about, so I watched Malcolm's List last night. It was pretty good. I felt like I love the atmosphere. I love the vibes. I love the setting and like just the the visuals like the visuals were serving but I don't know I like the side characters a little bit more than I like the two main characters and like they were a little it was a little bit boring not gonna lie it was good I will say that it was good the plot was good it was intriguing like I smelled little sparks of like ooh, 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 okay this I'm enjoying this but I'll give it like a I'll give it like a 75% out of 100, okay? It wasn't like Bridgerton, the last season, Bridgerton, the chemistry between those actors, that's what I need every time. That is what I mean when I say chemistry, plot line, everything. That was good. The only thing I didn't like about Bridgerton season two was the fact that it involved like betraying her sister in a way. I don't like, I don't like anything that involves betraying like sisters. I hate that. It was okay. I enjoyed it. Watched it last night. I just love the visuals of just like, that's my favorite, just my favorite vibe. If you haven't seen on my Instagram, I did like a Pinterest board of like my favorite vibe and it's like the historical era, like the vintage, all that. I love it. I ate it up. So enjoyed that and it kind of put me in the mood to read some more. So I'm gonna do that and I will check in with you guys later. What's up, what's up, what's up? What's up, what's up, what's up? I'm way too happy for it to be a Monday, but I need to update y'all before I forget. I just came back from the gym. I had a phenomenal workout. I upped my weight by like 30 pounds for my hip thrust and 
you know, when you just lift heavy weights, you just feel like a boss. So, that's how I'm feeling right now. But I wanted to update you guys on Rebel Women Who Dare series by Beverly Jenkins. So far, my dad, I don't know why I think about this, but I could have been listening to the audiobook and I could have finished both of them books during my break. But it was so much going on during that break, I really didn't have time. So I started listening to the audiobook while I was at work today, and I only have this much left. So I have about 100 or so pages left to finish it, and I'm really enjoying it. Now I understand more about the character. So basically, this was following the main character, who is a teacher and who is teaching newly freed slaves. And the male main character is an architect and like a carpenter, so he like builds stuff. And his family is like known for being like pirates apparently and he also does like volunteer work to help the newly freed slaves like he, they're like a little reporting academy like they're like a little police academy so people come and report like crime to them and stuff so they're together but she's already supposedly betrothed somebody i figured out one of the tropes within the first like 10 pages but i'm really enjoying it once i got to like 60 percent the steam started rolling in yeah when the steam started rolling in the steamy scenes was, was you know you know that angst that angsty steam that angsty steam she was here my battery's flashing so if my camera died i'm sorry i thought that i didn't like the cheating trope but mayhaps i do the only thing i don't like so far with this book was how they keep mentioning that he's a pirate like where is the proof like where is the proof that he's this pirate like we like i would love to see some proof of him being a supposed pirate or just stop talking about it like please stop talking about it like i felt like there was a little bit of chemistry because he was feeling her from day one so i you know he was always like up on her but like she's also a very innocent person she's um this is the you know the virgin the virgin trope they don't have sex until i get married type sh so she doesn't know anything about any of that he kind of like you know let me teach you a little something you want me to teach you a little something if you, you know if you don't know i mean it it, it's only right that I teach you some things and that's where it just started getting great so 60% in really enjoying it but then her child her husband showed up after she had a night with him <laughs> and I oh I was like oh your husband downstairs girl but it's getting good I'm really enjoying it so I really like it I'll go more into depth about what I really love about it when I finish it tomorrow when my camera's not angrily flashing at me so I'll check in with y'all then but so far so great first Beverly Jenkins book is a success so far and I just love this cover <laughs> what's up what's up what's up I got a bra on hopefully y'all can see y'all little Nikki all right, y'all, what's up? Let's get this timer, because y'all already know, no more hour videos. 30 to 45 minutes max. I be wanting to talk to y'all all the time, but I gotta chop it up a little bit. All right, so I have finished Rebel, Women Who Dare, my first Beverly Jenkins book, and she was cute. She was cute. I'll, dog, why you gotta be right under my feet? She was cute. I'll give her a... I'll give her a 3.5. I'll give her a 3.5, but it wasn't really boring, but there were some parts that were boring. So let me fill y'all in. So one thing that I put in my notes was that I know it's set in a different time period, but this is set in New Orleans. So I wish like the New Orleans like setting would have been, you know, more apparent or like the, the background would have been painted better. Like the vibe and the historical setting was more upfront. But I wish it was more of like the people and the environment and like the music and stuff like that. I know like back then maybe it was like different, but New Orleans is really a city that's just like got a specific vibe to it. It's like you if you say you went to Jamaica and you just talk about the people around you, but you don't talk about the atmosphere. Like I wanted more of like the atmosphere. Another thing I put was that she's a very strong, independent woman love to see that i guess like this little mini series of her books is like focusing on women 
who like are going against the grain, going against the norm. So Valinda was somebody who was teetering on whether or not she wanted to be married because she really wanted to pursue her career as a teacher and help newly free slaves and be able to further their freedom with the ability to read. Growing up, she never really saw marriage as something that was a loving thing until she came to New Orleans and she met, I thought it was Laveau child, but the Levesque family, she got to see his parents and how much they loved each other and his brother and his wife and how much they loved each other. She's always seen marriage as something contractual. So seeing it as something that was like a loving situation kind of went against like her beliefs and she started to question like, well, damn, do I really want to get married? Like maybe because it's seen, she's seen it as something different. So that was fun to explore. <laughs> I feel very similar in that. Like growing up, I never really saw two people together that genuinely loved each other and wanted to be together. It was always like, they don't really like each other like that or like they end up getting divorced. Like, you know, it was never like a healthy, happy, loving marriage. And, or like financially this is why we're doing it because it makes sense like it never was like based off of love and to me it's really important for me to get married based off of love so I enjoyed that narrative because I like seeing her kind of like question you know what is marriage about what like you know what can I learn from it speaking of learn she was the teacher but he was teaching her some things like they came to an agreement for him to give her some lessons and that's all, you know, she wanted to keep her virtue, but he was teaching her some things. It was cute. It was cute. It was innocent. It was prayer. It was prayer for the most part. But he definitely taught her some things. But I was like, girl, <laughs> take the thermals off. Like, she literally would keep, be fully clothed when all of these sexy times was happening. I'm like, sister girl, undress. I know you're trying to, you know, keep your purity and all this, but like, your titties out, okay? Like, how pure can it be? Okay, you know what I'm saying? Like, just, just undress, my girl. Undress. But, yeah, I, I enjoyed him as a main character. We love a big, broly man. Like, I just love, like, big men. I know the girls love tall, dark, and handsome white men, but like, it's something about, like a big man that's like six plus, six feet plus and like over 230. You know what I'm saying? We like the heavy ones over here. You know, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, it was a good time. It was a good time. I kind of, I like their banter. The only other thing I put in my notes was like, I didn't like how convenient everything was. I felt like every time something went wrong or anytime there was like a little like drama or issues or whatever, it conveniently was solved or everything lined up perfectly. In regards to her family, that was the only time they had to address issues head on and you actually got to see them work through those issues. There were other things that were happening that you kind of got to see them work through issues, but it also felt very convenient and like easily solved, I guess. Yeah, I really enjoyed the ending. The ending really just delivered, and it's just something about this setting. Like, the girls back in the day, it was just moo-moos and their husbands building their houses from scratch, okay? Let's get the moon moves rolling, all right? Because they, they was getting their houses built from scratch. They was building houses back in the day. So it's just something about that. It's just something about, like, a man just building a house from the bottom up. Like, we need to bring back these times. <laughs> we need to bring back these times to a certain extent. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but apparently, like, the Laveau, the, oh, I keep going to say Laveau, the Levesque family is, like, a series the starting of a series that she started in like 1999 so I guess that's where like the the talk of like him being a pirate comes from she just kept calling him pirate and I'm like where's the proof of this where the proof at and I guess the proof is in the other books but all in all she was 3.5 she was cute enjoyed the audiobook and I'm going to start the next one but there isn't an audiobook for that one so I'm gonna have to really crank crank down on this one I will see you guys in the next update another thing I just finished a Christmas book five stars across the board if you follow me on goodreads you already know what which one it is but if you don't it is mistletoe blues i absolutely loved it two black leads short novella fun times christmas settings it just was i loved it sexy times was was great i did both of the characters were funny and fun if you're looking for a black love romance christmas setting please read that book i actually recommended it in this video up here if you stay to the end of the video, you would already know about this book. But I recommended it in this video up here, so you guys definitely need to check that book out. I just finished it today. But I'll check back in with you guys once I start the other book. Okay, so I'll see you in the next clip. Bye.
Put a little egg up in there. It's cute. Child, I done seen it all. They don't gotta put an egg up in the cat food. Child. Child, let me, mm, let me get my timer going because I got some stuff to tell y'all. The past month, so many things have been going wrong. It's kind of driving me crazy. Currently, the drama is Pev's tank is leaking, which is it, it. I I don't even know what to say because any <laughs> of the aquarium girlies, where there's fish tanks, turtles, snakes, whatever. If y'all have in like an aquarium or a tank, you know how expensive those things are. They're between sixty to like three hundred dollars just for the tank. Then when you add in the light, the light fixtures, the stands, all this, you talking about like $600. And I want to get her a new tank anyway because I'm redesigning my little desk area, but I still want to keep her near me. But her tank is a little bit too big. So I was gonna get it like 10 gallons smaller and a smaller stand just so that I can fit her in this area. I literally budgeted that out to happen next month. And I come home and her tank is leaking and I'm just like, you know, unexpected things don't really work well for me because I'm one of those people that plan and schedule things to the best of my ability. I'm a huge budgeter. So like unexpected expenses are not fun for me. Like literally last week I had to take Doll to the vet because she got sick and now Pebs. I'm just like, why is life trying me right now? So I'm just a little bit overwhelmed. But I just figured I'd come home, <sighs> drain this tank of 70 gallons of water. I have a hose that is so convenient and so easy to drain the tank. All I have to do is connect it to the faucet in my bathroom. But this faucet doesn't fit the hose that I have, which is so much fun. I cannot tell you how much fun it is. That's been my couple days. Honestly, the only reason I haven't jumped off of a cliff or lost my mind is literally because of my man. Like, that's literally it. He keeps me grounded. He bought Pebs um, a temporary tank. He lets me vent. He lets me, you know, go a little crazy, but he makes sure I don't jump off the edge. So I'm very grateful for him. And right now, I'm just gonna try to see if I can get this water out of this tank. <sighs> it's life. We move. There's nothing I can do about it. So. On the reading tip, things are going really, really well. I'm, I think, like two books away from reading 130 books this year, and I still have a whole month left, and I've been reading so many Kindle Unlimited Christmas books that are all obviously black. Really been enjoying those books, and I started this book, and I was right. There was, I swear, there was something about this book that was just calling to me. I knew I was gonna love this one out of the three that I had, and I'm I'm just eating it up. I'm like 130 pages into this. So this book follows the main character. Her name is Mariah and she's lived with her mother basically her whole life as a seamstress and has been helping her with her shop. But her mom is really toxic and like really mean to her and she gets to the point where she's just like, okay, I'm, I'm damn near 30. Like I'm not about to keep letting you talk to me like this. So she decides to restart her life in a new city. She lives in Philadelphia. She ends up moving to California and she gets a new job as basically like the housemaid or the maid. They own this farmland and she's from the city but she's supposed to come there to help him, you know, keep his house clean because his house is looking crazy. And his name is Logan. He lives on the farm with his stepmother and his two brothers are, three of the boys grew up together, but they're like out, you know, living life doing stuff. But he stayed on the farm. He's like a farmhand and he has like people that help in the area and stuff like that. And his stepmama is not going for how junky his damn house looks. Like his mom, his house looks crazy, like literally insane. So she hires help, which is Mariah. Mariah comes to the new city and Mariah kind of makes this like, 
she basically says like I'm not gonna let anyone else disrespect me or talk to me the way that my mother did she basically changes her whole personality she turns to this firecracker of a person who's just like t not taking nobody and she shows up there and Logan is so used to get his way he used to be in the boss he used to be in charge he used to be in control and she being that she has a new personality that she's embraced she's not going for it so they keep button heads they, keep, they have this funny hilarious banter he kissed her she kicked him in his knee he been limping the whole book it's just funny <laughs> I'm so sorry they just they keep button heads and he keeps he keeps trying to like call her bluff and she ain't bluffing she's not playing with his and he's kind of has to like compromise and listen to her but they also have these really sweet moments where like she ended up getting hurt because she had already started cleaning the house but he like keeps checking her hands and like it's just so sweet romance books that have characters that have a lot of banter I really really enjoy and female main characters that are like a little feisty and she just embracing her feistiness and not taking nobody and their banter is absolutely hilarious so i'm really enjoying this i'm gonna just like do peps tank and then i'm gonna get some reading done i don't know if i'm gonna finish this book before i close this vlog because i'll probably close it tomorrow and get it posted for you guys but i really just want to take my time with this book because it's a quick and easy read but i don't want to rush it for this video but i just wanted to update you guys on everything that's going on loving this one so much i will see you guys in the next clip bye here's peb's new digs it's not as deep but you know it'll do for now it's still as big but it's not as deep i'm definitely gonna have to you hear her over there swimming around i'm gonna have to get more rocks probably just get the two bag the two pound bag one Pebs is over there. Do y'all do y'all hear her? Oh, now she want to stop because she busted. I've had her since I was 18, so I've already tried this before. But anytime I get her cute little decorations, she digs all of them up and they just end up floating in the top of the tank. Like I used to get her plants and little decorations, and she always dug them up. Like I tried for like six months. And she was not going for it, but, you know, she's a little older in age, so maybe, maybe she grew out of that. We'll see how it goes, but, yeah. Another episode of Doll's Delight. They got peas and gravy in their food now. I think her favorite brand so far has been Tiki Cat. I don't really like Tiki Cat because I just like the decor, the design on the, <laughs> the can. I think it's cute, but, yeah. These cats be eaten down now. Look at her. <laughs> Bring the treats. Girl, get out the way. So I'm on the ground because it's just too much going on in my desk area right now. Let me close my shirt. But I'm just here to close out the vlog. I want to get this up for you guys today. I read a little bit more, so I'm currently on chapter 10. I'm halfway through Destiny's Embrace. And again, I'm still loving this one. I knew I was going to love this one. Honestly, there's some similarities between this book and Rebel. Mariah is like a little bit more intense. Like she is willing to throw hands. She's willing to throw hands. Oh, let me take my glasses off, Joe. Mariah is willing to throw hands so she's a little bit different than um Felissa was in Rebel but another thing that I'm enjoying with this book is the, the atmosphere set I was wishing that Rebel set more of like the New Orleans atmosphere so this one is set in a ranch and the setting is like there's small things that are added into the book and the descriptions that help you understand what everything looks like the atmosphere is very apparent and you can kind of like visually see like where she's at in California and like what's going on i like books that have women that kind of like revamp their life seeing mariah come into this new setting and being like a city girl and not being like someone that's um, used to like farming and stuff like that similar to the first one the male love interest always has someone that he's like courting and then like they conveniently just like disappear or they conveniently are no longer together you know what i'm saying like why even have them date you know if it's not gonna be a part of the book like that like, what's the point of having the man have, like, a girlfriend or having a fling or whatever? Child, I don't get it. But anyway, I'm really enjoying this. The slow burn, the angst, 
like the arguments the banter the setting like i'm just enjoying seeing her like become a new person and really embrace like the culture i'm also enjoying little history lessons as far as like spanish uh, backgrounds and like uh, everyone there speaks spanish and like the Spanish culture is also added into here, which I really enjoy. I think that's basically it. I child, I didn't even read that other book. I don't even remember what the other book was about. I just wanted to come and close out this vlog. Thank you guys so much for watching. This is actually gonna be my last vlog of the year. So for the rest of the December, it's gonna be all of like the end of the year videos coming out. So it'll be nice to have that little break to be able to catch up on Goodreads reviews and just like read freely and not be reading books based off of like themes I'm doing for videos. So that'll be nice. But I hope you guys enjoyed this vlog. Let me know if you've read any books by Beverly Jenkins. I think out of, out of the two that I read in this vlog, this one is going to end up being my favorite. I'm only halfway through it, but if it keeps going how it's going, this is going to be my favorite. If you made it to the end of this video, leave a horse emoji or what else is on a ranch? A cactus? If, if you have a cactus emoji, any type of emoji that has to do with like a ranch leave it in the comment section below always remember read a book keep your life interesting and i will see you next time bye